Hi, my name is Clemens Fosses. I work at Microsoft in the messaging team. Uh, the messaging team owns Azure Service Bus, Azure Event Hubs, um, Service Bus for Windows Server. So we're owning the messaging assets of uh, um, at Microsoft Corporation. We're working very closely with uh, teams like the Azure IoT team, which owns the IoT Hub. And what all of those infrastructures have in common is that they bet very heavily, that they lean on the AMQP 1.0 protocol as their primary protocol. And uh, instead of uh, keeping that a mystery of how that uh, protocol works, we thought it would be a good idea to kind of share a uh, little bit more detail how that protocol works. Uh, the protocol specifications uh, is over 100 pages long. Um, and that's, uh, even though it's very well written, um, we thought it would be a good idea to kind of give you um, a little bit of an easier approach to the protocol because the protocol is very useful not only for people who build infrastructure like we do and build clients themselves, but as an interoperable protocol that can be used even for inter-application traffic that's also specifically useful in the context of the Internet of Things. So let's uh, um, see what AMQP is. Uh, we're going to do this in uh, six episodes. So this is the first one, kind of providing an overview. And uh, I'm going to explain the details of AMQP going down to the wire in the coming episode. So AMQP is a secure, compact, symmetric, multiplexed, reliable binary transfer protocol to move messages between applications. And that is a very important point together with uh, the fact that it's not tied to any particular message source or target model or topology or any of those notions. Previous versions of AMQP, um, you know, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, um, some of those are still in use um, in other infrastructures. They have a very particular notion about a queue and a broker and exchanges and whatever those things are called. And uh, that is no longer existing in AMQP 1.0, which is great because we would not be able to build the kind of flexible various infrastructures that we built that are supporting the AMQP 1.0 protocol. Like we do have queues, but we also have topics. We have these event hubs, which are these large scale ingestion systems, which are looking like a queue from the front, but looking more like a database from the back. And all of that is doable using the AMQP 1.0 protocol. And those things were not would not have been possible with the AMQP protocol versions, the draft versions uh, prior. And the standard is AMQP 1.0. It's now by now ISO IEC standardized uh, 19464. And with that, with being an ISO standard, it's also being adopted into vertical industry standards um, to provide messaging capabilities in the context of those vertical industries. And uh, that being an IEC or ISO standard certainly helps with that. What MQP provides is a layered model. There's an underlying first security foundation, which is very explicit about how uh, AMQP ties into transport level security or also ties into other security models. Um, and also has a connection layer, connection um, level, so application layer level authentication mechanism using a standardized model um, using uh, the SASL framework. Um, then follows frame transfer protocol, which defines how frames get moved between parties. And then on top of that is a message transfer protocol, and that is how message transfers happen. So I'll give you that overview now in this episode, and I'm going to go drill down into more details um, as we um, go on in this course in the further episodes. The frame transfer part uh, in, um, has the connection as the foundational uh, model for how connections are being established, and that directly layers on top of the transport connection. So you create a connection with the, the, the transport protocol, let's say TCP, and then there's a security handshake taking place where you can go and uh, establish a TLS channel either before you start with AMQP altogether, or you can go and negotiate the TLS version you want to go and support, and that's already within the realm of, T of uh, AMQP, so you can do effectively an in-place upgrade using the exact same socket for both unsecured, meaning not, not TLS and secured with TLS AMQP over the same socket. So it allows that dupli that um, uh, multiplexing. So you create the TLS socket, then you can go and overlay the SASL handshake, which allows you to do authentication, either binding client credentials that you have established on the TLS level, binding that to the application level, or flowing other kinds of credentials, um, tokens or passwords, keys, 
um, from uh, the client to the server that you connect to. So, and then you start the MQP session proper. Um, the notion of, um, of applications manifests in the MQP spec as so-called containers. And it's called containers because the containers contain nodes. And that's something we're going to discuss on the next slide. What connections do is they manage the foundational transfer capacity. And uh, one way they do this is by defining a maximum frame size they're willing to support. And, and precisely as the container, um, the sending container, uh, which means the, the one that acts as the TCP client, sends its open uh, frame, and that's the first frame that's being sent across the wire to the other party, it says that this is the maximum frame size I am supporting, and uh, in the reply, which is the open from the, from the server side, um, that will also tell you what the maximum frame size is. Maximum frame size is, is thus the maximum message size effectively, the maximum payload size that can be carried with those messages. Communicating this, negotiating that is very, very important specifically in when you think about the IoT, we have a small constraint devices where we measure available memory for applications in kilobytes. And uh, you don't want to be able to send messages to a device uh, where the size of the message on the wire exceeds the buffer capacity that exists on the other side. So that's a first throttling capability that AMQP has to be able to go and constrain the size of any of the frames that are being set. Another uh, mechanism to go in and constrain the transfer is that every party, so the, any of these containers, can define for the connection the maximum number of channels that can be used. And a channel is a independent path through which messages can be sent. The way channels are being used is through sessions. Sessions bind two channels together, so the connection, the, con the client, has a has a channel that's being outbound. All of those channels are effectively, you can look at them as being outbound. The server also has outbound channels and those go in a different direction. And establishing a session basically takes two of those channels and binds them together into a bi-directional connection. So MQP at the, at the bottom is a bi-directional communication protocol um, that's fully symmetric. Um, that now at the session level has another set of flow control options because there's an incoming window and there's an outgoing window on either side. And that is how many frames can be handled by either side. So that allows furthermore flow control. So it's a, the session is a multiplex channel. We'll see what, how that's multiplexing in a second. And you, al you can allow a maximum number of messages to be flow flowed um, on that session. So that gives you a throttling capability. Having multiple sessions allows you to have multiple completely independently throttled channels. So you can have your application data, the, you know, the main flow is uh, one session, and then you may have data that needs special attention that needs to kind of pass by everything else. You need to have the high, the HOV lane, as they say um, in, uh, in America, or the, um, you know, the express lane, if you will, on a highway. And so uh, that you can realize by having a second session. The second session has separate flow control, so you can have uh, the application session maybe backed up, but you have a separate session through which you can route something that's urgent, like diagnosis information or alerts. So that's one of the, ge the general capabilities of AMQP, the general attitudes of AMQP, that it is handling the connection as a very precious thing. Creating a connection may be super expensive because uh, you need to go in first and negotiate, you need to go, go and connect, create the connection proper. You need to go and set up TLS. You need to go and set up credentials. So that all initial handshake creates latency because it's, especially if the parties are far away. So creating that connection is a very expensive act. So therefore, AMQP tries to maximize the use of that connection by allowing that multiplexing. Those connections and sessions are ephemeral constructs. So when the connection ultimately collapses for whatever reason, um, the connection in the session, all that information is not retained, so you have to go and set that up again. For reliable messaging, and there's a concept that's layered on top of that, and this is why the messaging protocol is separate, and that's called links, and those links are not ephemeral. They are actually, they can be made durable and they can be recovered. So let's talk about that messaging layer that's, under, that's uh, on top of this. Containers manage nodes. 
And when you think about a message broker, you know of queues, you may know of topics, and those are addressable entities within that broker. Some of those brokers have a flat list, just queue names. Some of them are, have more sophisticated structures like graphs. Service Bus has a graph in which you can go and place your entities. Um, and so that, the model supports both because uh, the, the nodes are addressed by a path. And either communicating party has nodes. So even a client, when that goes and connects out to another party, has a notion of a node, it's the client node, if you will, and it can create nodes for multiple parallel communications. So the container is the app, the node is an addressable entity of whatever shape in that app, but there's no prescription for what that ought to be, not as in prior versions of AMQP, not as in other protocols that, have, that specifically speak of a topic or a queue. Here it's a neutral thing is just a sync for messages or a source for messages and uh, the protocol is not particular about how that's being designed and how that works um, it's just a message sync or a source links connect between those nodes and links are being created unidirectional so data messages flow just in one direction a node opens up a link it calls attach and attaches the link to itself and then also asks for the other party to go and attach that link in either of two roles, not surprisingly sender or receiver. So the sender, um, so the, 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 the originating node sends attach saying, I want to be a receiver and the other party goes and accepts that um, link and then acts as the um, sender role and vice versa. These links are unidirectional for message traffic. They're, they're bidirectional because uh, there's data being exchanged and that is flow control information and also information about what happens with those messages. So when you send a message over to the other side, you can ask it to be explicitly settled. An explicit settlement in that case means that the other party says, other party works on that message and then ultimately says, this is what I did with that message. I accepted it or I rejected it or sorry, I can't deal with that message right now, I'm going to release it and you can go and send it to someone else if you want to. Um, so there's an explicit management of that and when the message gets rejected, it caused an error and so there's an explicit error flow as you would expect from a messaging protocol um, uh, back to the sender so the sender knows. So while the, the payloads only flow in one direction, there's bidirectional communication happening over that link for communicating state and also for communicating flow control. If your application needs to have a bidirectional flow, well then it's very easy. It creates two links. It creates one link where it is in the role of the sender. It creates one link where it is in the role of the receiver. And then with that you establish a bidirectional communication path. The nice thing about this here with AMQP is that this is super suitable for peer-to-peer -peer communication between arbitrary applications. So if you have an AMQP stack and that AMQP stack, the AMQP, you know, um, protocol core, so to speak. There's two I would name. There's AMQP Net Lite that's up on GitHub um, and that's uh, in .NET for the, anything from the micro framework through Mono through um, the full .NET framework. It supports also the compact framework. So effectively from the smallest device to servers, um, you can use that protocol core to program at the link level. And then there's also um, the Apache Cupid Proton project, which, uh, which gives you a core in C or in Java, and on top of those course are language bindings for anything from Python to PHP and Go um, and C++ um, that allow you to go and program really at that level and create peer-to-peer -peer connections. And of course, that .NET stack and the Proton stack also interoperate with each other. So you can build, um, you can use AMQP as your primary bidirectional link uh, protocol between parts of your application, kind of on the back end. That is exactly what we do also at Microsoft. What's interesting about those links is that those are named by the application and they can outlive the connections and the sessions. So if the session con uh, collapses or the connection collapses, then um, you can, and a new connection is being created, then you can go and recover those links and you can also reconcile that state um, between this delivery state between those two parties and make it work again. So much for an introductory overview over AMQP and what it does. And uh, in the following sessions, I'm going to talk about the, the protocol elements in more detail. The next session is going to be about connection security sessions and links.